So you're welcome to Kema Free. My name is Kemi Omorube and on this channel, in case you're new here, on this channel we share sewing tutorials, some DIYs, business of fashion, and also a little bit of my life as a fashion entrepreneur. I like to call myself that. So on this video, I'll be sharing a tutorial on this outfit. I wore it in some of my previous tutorials. I think about two of them. I got a couple of requests to share the tutorial on this and ah, truth be told, I was kind of reluctant. I felt, ah, I will be sharing your original design. I was reluctant, but then I thought, mm, why not? After all, we'll still get better inspiration in the future and we'll bring even more gorgeous designs to our ready to wear collection. So I'll be sharing a tutorial on this. So if you're new here, please subscribe. Let me say that. Let's analyze this style together. You can see it has a yoke. The upper bodies, it has a yoke. It has um, flounce. I'll make a separate tutorial for flounce. And the main bodies has just two waist that. The same thing for the back. So the lower part is just a regular skirt. I think I'll share a tutorial on, I will share a tutorial on how to draft skirt pattern and probably sew a skirt. But this is just a skirt attachment to the upper bodies. And then this sleeve has a yoke as well. And the flange runs from the center front through to the sleeve and backwards this way. Can you see that? The yoke part was made with cord lace while the main body of the outfit made with crepe. The particular crepe uses a little thick, so that's why this stands. There's no form of fortification inside because the crepe is a little bit thick and the edge of the flounce was woven with an overlocker. That's the industrial overlocker to give it a fine finish in here without having to stitch with uh, the regular stitch. So basically that's it. That's, that, that's just the analysis for this dress. So let's move on to the working table where we'll be designing this together. It's okay to give this video a thumbs up right now before we actually do the work. <laughs> Some of the things you'll be needing for this tutorial include the basic bodice block. If you haven't watched a tutorial where I shared how to draft the basic bodice block using the boss that technique, I'll be linking it up above and in the description box. You also need your basic sleeve, which I also have a tutorial on, which I will be linking below. And I'll be making use of this crepe fabric. This is slightly light, okay? I'll prefer making use of a thicker fabric, but this is just for demonstrative purpose. So if you'll be making yours, you should make use of a thicker crepe fabric. And also this is my cord lace, or are my cord lace, because they're actually shredded in pieces, and that's what I'll be using for this tutorial. Other things you'll be needing are your regular drafting and cutting tools. You can use either the masking tape or this scotch tape to hold down the dart. I'll be making use of a ruler and a pattern curve and my scissors and pins, just your regular sewing tools. So the back part of this dress is actually a regular back piece. There is no modification, no need for any form of modification for the back pattern but then on the front pattern we'll be working a little bit here because we need to cut out the yoke my pattern was drafted using the boss that technique you can see i have this boss that here also there's the regular waist that so i'll be transferring this boss that to the waist here but before then let's mark out the outline for the yoke i'm marking five inches from this point now, I will draw out a straight line, which will be, it will be like an inverted V. So rather than having a V neckline this way, it's like having a slight V neckline pointing downward. So from here, I'll just mark to, every modification I'll be doing, I'll be making use of this black paint so you can see it properly. So from the center front here, I just mark to the armhole curve here. So this part will be our yoke and this will be the main body for the outfit. None of this has a sewing allowance yet, so I want to mark the position of the sleeve yoke. So I'll just fold the sleeve pattern this way. I'll be holding it from the top of the armhole here and just holding it down to see where exactly I need to mark. And this is where we have here. So I'll be marking the yoke for the sleeve will be starting at this point. So I'll just keep that aside so we can finish work on this. So actually I can cut out this yoke now, but let's work on this dart. 
the first thing i'll be doing here will be to slit open the waist dart so as to transfer the boss dart so i'm slitting at the center of the dart this way so i can now close up the bust that so back to the front pattern now i'll be holding the bust that over the other part of the dart leg so i can have this openness here so that way i have transferred the bust dart to the waist and here becomes closed i'll just be marking here out this is called throwing i have successfully transferred the boss that to the waist and now i can cut out this pattern i can cut out the yoke before i continue i just remember that the neckline is actually a v neckline so i've made the i've marked out the yoke here and i'll be connecting from the top corner here to that v point okay so we have this at the yoke yours can be deeper okay you don't have to do exactly these six inches you can go as far as seven inches if you like so i have this little v here and i will just signify that this is the armhole armhole curve and this is the shoulder so that way i don't get it mixed up and here is the center front this part goes into the center front now i'll just cut out the yoke and set it aside So we have this. So this is what I'll be cutting on fabric, the yoke, the body, and also the back pattern. So now let's look at the sleeve together. Like you know already, I already outlined where my yoke part will end. So we need a little deep V also for the sleeve because it kind of falls towards the elbow okay it's not just a straight um, attachment so this part will be deeper than this level it depends on what you want anyway but then i'll go as deep as um let's say eight inches here so eight inches here and i'll just create a curve downward like so so that way we have the sleeve yoke okay so now i can cut this out to separate the yoke from the sleeve body so we have these two pieces for the sleeve so these are all the pieces we'll be cutting out on fabric so here are the pieces cut on fabric I didn't want to bore you with the cutting process, but I'll just be explaining some stuff you need to note while cutting out your fabric. So I just noticed that I actually cut out the zip allowance from the center back. Please don't do that. <laughs> it's an error on my part. Please don't do that to you. So I had to add back the zip allowance, one inch zip allowance, and there's a half an inch seam allowance at the neckline, half an inch at the shoulder line, at the armhole curve i also added half an inch at the side but you can add one inch at the side but this is just for demonstrative purpose so also i have half an inch at the base of the back here so for this sleeve i have half an inch here so that when i'm attaching the yoke i can have that half an inch seam allowance i also have half an inch at the edge of the sleeve yoke here half an inch along the side of the sleeve, half an inch at the armhole part of this sleeve, the armhole part of the yoke, half an inch on this side of the yoke as well. So that way we have all our same allowance sorted out here. So let me set this aside. For the front, 
there's also half an inch at the side you can make use of one inch like i mentioned earlier on half an inch here i'm not even sure i added allowance here but half an inch here if you're making a full cloth so i'm just drafting this upper part for teaching purpose also for the darts please note that there is half an inch left here from the initial width dart okay so that i didn't cut it out so that will save us the same allowance for this dart when i'm sewing it back together and towards the apex of this dart i didn't cut through to the bust point so the point where i stopped cutting is like one inch below the bust point so that way you know when you are sewing you're not just going to stop at the edge of your cut out you need a little extra to make to taper it off properly so that's it for the front there's also half an inch here which i'll be using to attach these two together half an inch along the armhole for sleeve attachment half an inch at the shoulder but at the center front notice that i cut this out two pieces of this not unfold okay it's a v neckline that ends here so i have two separate pieces and also use the neat part of the edge of the lace you're using it's going to appear prettier so make sure this edge is neat so you don't have to use a bias tape or whatever just the way the lace edge of the lace slips on you gives it a kind of beauty so you don't need a seam allowance here for that purpose because you are making use of a lace edge right so here there's half an inch half an inch half an inch one last thing you need to cut out a facing for the back and i'll just be doing that by placing this on a fabric unfold two pieces of fabric not necessarily unfold because the two back pieces are separate and i'll just be outlining the back so this is a crude method anyway crude method of cutting um a facing because i didn't actually do that on the pattern you can do that right from the pattern Okay, now I have a facing for both sides of the back piece. So let's start with the back piece. I'll mark out the dart. So we'll be starting the sewing by working on the dart. I already marked out the position of the dart. I'll be making a six inches long dart from here. It will be half an inch on both sides. So I'll just hold each piece on the wrong side and sew in my one inch wide dart. Now I have this and I have the other side also. So I'm putting the yoke on the main piece, right side facing each other, and I'll be sewing along the back neckline by half an inch. So here is the back neckline and I'll just be notching around it to help the seam relax properly. And once that is done, I'll be raising the facing this way and top stitching on the facing by one eighth to one quarter of an inch. Okay, this seam has to be neat. You top stitch on the facing, making sure that the seam allowance is towards the facing, not towards the outfit. Once that is done, this is what I have on the facing. Okay, I'll set this apart, do the same thing on the other side. And now let's work on the front piece. First, we'll be sewing in the darts by half an inch on both sides of the front piece. So from the wrong side, sew in the darts by half an inch. Remember that extra half an inch that we didn't cut out. So that will help us stitch these two together. And we'll extend it just a little bit above the apex of our cutout guys my machine is acting up and i'm so determined to do this i've had it in mind for like a while now i ain't gonna let nothing stop me <laughs> So 
okay so the dart has been sewn don't forget to always give your dart a good press so it lays flat so here is the yoke and we'll be attaching this yoke to the front bodies and we'll be sewing these two together by half an inch this is a neckline this is the other neckline so i'll position each at the center front of the main bodies right side facing each other from the center front i'll be sewing half an inch towards the armhole and i'll do the same thing on the other side Now I have the front yoke attached to the main front piece. So the next thing is to notch along the new seam line and give this a good press so it lays flat. So the next thing I'll be doing now is to sew the front and back pieces together. So you just lay the back piece right side facing the front and we'll be sandwiching this yoke between the main back piece and the facing of the back. So the yoke will be sandwiched between the back piece, the shoulder of the back piece and the shoulder of the facing of the back. So I'll be sewing these three pieces together along the shoulder line by half an inch. Here I have attached the front and back piece together along the shoulder line. Now I can set this apart so we do a quick work on the sleeve. So remember our sleeve has a yoke, right? So by attaching the sleeve to the yoke, by half an inch and that's I'll be doing first by making sure that this center aligns with the center of the sleeve and we'll be sewing from that point by half an inch towards the left after that we'll sew towards the right again so that we will have our yoke fully attached like this If you're going for a sharp um, point at the center of your sleeve this way, you may have to notch the open at the, exactly the center so that way you can turn around. But if you don't want it sharp, you can make it slightly curvy. Even the previous ones I made are kind of curvy around here, not sharp. But I realized I cut here sharp, so I'm just going to be working with that. So here are the sleeve after the yoke has been attached and I'll be attaching each sleeve to each side of the bodies now and sewing by a one inch seam allowance. First I'll notch the center of the sleeve. Note the part of the sleeve that should come to the front and to the back especially if you use our method of drafting sleeve i have two tutorials on how to draft a basic sleeve here you might want to check it out so note the part that should come to the front and the other part that should go towards the back so now we're going to be sewing our sleeve together the part i marked at the center of the sleeve i'll be aligning it with the shoulder line and for the back i'll be pulling away the facing once i get to this stage so i don't want to attach the facing yet i'll just sew this onto the front so also remember that when we're drafting we kind of aligned the junction between the main piece of fabric and the cord lace here so we want it to flow with where the 
yoke ended for the front bodies as well so note that when you're joining together make sure they align properly and you complete the sewing this way so for the back piece just pull away the facing and continue on only the main back piece sewing by half an inch along the armhole so here i have attached the sleeve and this is the front the back and we have the sleeve this way so before doing anything else don't forget to notch around your yoke sleeve attachment here and also round the armhole curve i actually forgot to cut out something here which is the facing for the front you need the facing for the front just like we have a facing for the back to close up this side of the front but otherwise you can also top stitch or you press in your seam or use a hemming glue to hold in the side of the seam then overlock the edge with a scissors so that you have a clean finishing inside so for mine now there is nothing obviously wrong on the outside but then i don't want this seam just free on the inside so you use the facing or you do either of the options i just gave you all right so let's go here I'll be turning the facing around to close up the seam this way. I'll be sewing by half an inch. So that way the facing is held in place and we'll have this part of the armhole curve well finished. Okay guys, let's take a look at these two outfits. They're one and the same thing, okay? Like I said, it's a modification of the basic bodies attached to a basic skirt actually a fitted skirt but then i'll teach you how to make a basic skirt and how to modify it to a fitted skirt in the next tutorial so now what's what we have left here is the flounce so double layer of flounce one is slightly smaller than the other so i have two pieces of flounce on this side and another piece on the other side now to know the length of flounce to make you're going to start measuring from the center place your tip right from the center of the yoke here and measure so here i have up to when i get to this armhole i'll just continue i'll just continue into the sleeve curve round the sleeve curve and i'll take it to the back so here is a twist you can give your own you don't have to stop at the top of the zip allowance here so mine is 31.5 inches but i'll just go ahead and make a 32 inches long flounce so you don't have to stop at here you can make yours and make it come this way you can bring it down you can basically walk around this my students recreated this actually and they did a lot of stuff with the flounce so yours doesn't have to come to the back like this one so let me just show you what i mean you can see the flounce running through the yoke of the sleeve and going to the top of the center back here so yours doesn't have to go that way you can stop and make it horizontal this way you can bring it downward and all of that so just be creative and play around with this so that's the last thing i'll be doing on this video so guys once you have overlooked the the upper part and the base of your flounce you're going to be attaching it from here so let's just so you're going to be sewing it please you're going to be top stitching on the seam line here to cover up the seam line and you'll be top stitching just a little kind of seam such that the overlocking will be showing at the top so the way this flounce is standing so firmly is because the fabric is a thick crepe you know, at the beginning of this tutorial, I mentioned that you should make use of a thick crepe fabric, not the light one. This is a light one. This is also a light crepe. So the thicker your crepe, the more the likelihood of having a firm flounce this way. So now you can go ahead and fix the skirt and then you fix the zip. Thank you for watching. I hope you had fun watching this tutorial. I would love to see people recreate this design. So I want to see a piece of yours. Just tag Chemafric Fashion on Instagram and you can get your design featured on our page and also at the community section of this channel. So I really, really love to see that. That means somebody is gaining something here and practicing it. If you are not following us on Instagram, please do. A link will be in the description box. It's at Chemafric underscore fashion on Instagram. 
and if you are not yet subscribed to this channel please click on the subscribe button when you subscribe click on the notification bell so you'll be notified every time we drop these videos thank you for watching and bye bye